In this video, we're gonna look at adding Microsoft as a sign-in provider so that anyone who has a Microsoft account can use that to sign up to your app, adding huge trust indicators to your potential users. This video is broken into two parts. Number one, set up in Azure, and number two, set up in Bubble. To get set up in Azure, the steps we're gonna be following are one, we're gonna be registering for or logging into an existing Azure account if you already have one. Number two is we're going to be registering a new app inside of the system. And then number three is we're gonna be noting down our app ID and our client secret ID. So basically an API, API key of sorts that will then take over and use those in Bubble. So to get started here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate, just you know, do a Google search or type in Azure, however you wanna go and find that site. And you can also type in azure.microsoft.com. And then once you're here, you can choose get started if you don't have an account, but if you already do have an account, go ahead and sign in. So that's what I'm gonna cho choose here. Um, and the sign up process, you know, just go ahead with that if you do not have an account, it is free. So once you're logged in, you'll actually be taken to this portal.azure.com and uh, uh, hashtag home. And a lot of these tech companies, the UIs do change over time. So what I wanna mention is that the steps that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using something called Azure Active Directory, and then we're gonna be registering an app in that. So those are the steps. If the UI changes, no worries. Just find your way to Azure Active Directory, whether it's here, or you can even search for it up here. So Azure Active Directory. And so I'll actually just choose this option. And then uh, again, we're trying to register a new, for a new app. And to do that, we could click this add and then go to app registration, or we can go down to app registrations and see all of the different apps that we have registered uh, on, on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit new registration and then I'm gonna start this sign up process. So uh, I'm gonna call this one a test app or test app for the name. Now this is a publicly facing name. So you wanna, you wanna put this officially as whatever name of your app is um, because it's gonna be like, hey, so-and-so, this is what Microsoft's gonna say, so-and-so is asking for permission to uh, you know, you log you in basically. What do you accept? And that's so-and-so, you wanna put that there. Uh, and then select this one where it counts in any organizational directory and personal Microsoft accounts. This is like the cast the widest net. Uh, and basically basically anyone uh, yeah, with a Microsoft account would be able to log into your system. Okay, for the re redirect URI, go ahead and select web here. And then I'm gonna bounce over to bubble where I'm gonna head over to the plugins tab and I've already got under the API connector plugin. You'll want to install that uh, if you don't already have it. Uh, or if you do, just go ahead and click add another API or add a new API and you'll see this same, and then expand this, you'll see the same screen that I see here. What I'm showing you here to get this UR, uh, redirect URI, I'm gonna go down to uh, OAuth2, user agent flow, and then here I can see that it presents me with this nice uh, URL that I can use and note I do have that little uh, extra parenthesis on it, so I'm gonna delete that and then call that good. So now I will go ahead and register that and then we've got just a little bit more set up and then we'll be off over into Bubble. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and note down this application client ID. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna drop it over into my notepad where I'm collecting stuff for the API setup and with that in hand, uh, that's one of two things that we wanted to get over from Azure, and then once we're done with that, then we are done. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the API permissions, which these are also known as scopes, and what these are going to do is allow us to, when we're interacting with it, there's so many products that they offer, and we're gonna say which ones we wanna have access to. So we're gonna click Add a Permission here, and then go ahead and click Microsoft Graft, Delegated permissions, and then it's this top one under Open ID permissions. Click email, offline access, Open ID, and profile. So with all of those selected, add that permissions, and you should be good to go there. And then uh, the next thing I'll mention before we get our final uh, API key thing is that over under 
authentication. If you need to change your redirect URI for some reason, um, you can do that here. Uh, you also can see the supported account types that you had set up. Uh, there's a little bit more setup than to change this one than just like entering something here. So maybe you would want to make a new app or just want to make sure there, you're probably good to go on this one, to be honest. And then lastly, I'll just mention that you can change the name of it here. Okay, so now let's head over to the certificates and secrets area where we're going to do this new client secret button and we'll just give it a description. It's the big secret. secret. And then uh, choose, you know, 24 months. You're probably good to go on that. Um, but make your own, you know, judgment call if you do want your app to be more secure, less time, and resetting that will do that. Now it's going to give you two values down here, and the one that you want is the value, uh, or two IDs rather. Um, and so take that, and then we'll also note that one down. And now we'll head back to our API. So with those API keys in hand, we're gonna head over to Bubble and the steps we're gonna follow in Bubble for our setup is number one, we're gonna set up the API authentication and in an API call. Number two is we're gonna set up the UI and the workflow for uh, basically the, the sign-in flow. And then number three, we're gonna test it all out. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a name of Microsoft. I'll call it the social login. And then uh, let's see, so I already had the secret one in hand. I'm gonna place that for both of those there. And then uh, note that, so when I was selecting this, you can see there's an extra space there. That's gonna mess things up. So just be careful about your character by character, uh, everything for, for this type of setup. It's very particular. Um, so next up, I'm gonna go ahead and check authentication goes in header. I'm going to check, use this uh, redirect URI, or URL, they're calling it. Um, and then I'm gonna grab these scopes. So these are the ones we set up and then those four, and then it has this user read on the end. These are also character sensitive and um, you wanna have a space in between all of them. So that's the, the setup that you'll use there. And then, uh, and I'll, I'll include this in the description of the video. So then you're gonna grab these three URLs, one for authorize, one for token, and then one for the profile endpoint. And note that we'll, we'll use this profile endpoint again in a API call. And then uh, many, many different OAuth providers will use this email as the email, but Microsoft has it as this user, capital P, principal, capital N, name. And then we will have to do some setup for this, which we won't do now uh, because I want to just set up this call real quick. And this call, what we're going to do is in order to actually get like the first name, last name, as we do the, the user sign up, then uh, that's what we're gonna do here. So let's see, yep, action, get, there. And so I can't initialize this one either until I go set that up. So I'm going to do a quick bit of UI work here where I'm gonna make each of these 100 and then just gonna update this to Microsoft. And then here is a handy URL. If you would like to use that, it will also be in the description for a little image for your sign up button. And then next up, well, let's go ahead and actually grab this. Then we'll do a command K on it to add a workflow. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to account, sign the sign up login with a social network. And then we will see our Microsoft social login. This other one is just a test. So if you recall, that is what we named our API. And so I'll select that. Cool, so now if we look back over at this area where we had this, it's saying, warning, you haven't uh, tested this one yet, we're gonna go and test it. So I'm gonna head over and get this page loaded up and then we'll see this uh, in action for a test. So it's gonna have me sign in. And then this is the, so we can see that if we would've added a logo, it would've been here. 
and this is our test app name that we added there and I'll just hit accept yep test app will be able to read your profile so on and so forth cool and so I've successfully initiated the OAuth 2 connection which back over in our uh, ABI connector we can see that other message went away and then it also means that we can uh, initialize this call, which uh, we'll take a note here that it's gonna come back with this information. So we've got this display name, we've got given name and surname, and so I'll go ahead and hit save here just to get that set up. And then now we'll return to our workflow where we will make a call to this get Microsoft sign up info. And so we'll have that one call it and then let me go ahead and just check what I do for my other ones. So this is a login and this is a sign up. So after this, I make changes to current user. Now in your world, you're gonna have something slightly different than this. So go ahead and you know uh, manage what you, what you will uh, for that. But because you can see here, what I'm just doing and showing off is that it is this uh, given name that will be the first name. And then the result of step two, it'll be the surname from the, for the last name. And then for the full name, uh, I guess it could just, it's actually gonna be easier for me to just do, do these two because there's a, there's a space in between there. Otherwise I'd have to, um, mess with two different blue expressions to bring them down to one, which I don't wanna do. Um, but so cool. So we basically, now we've got the user signed up and let's, let's see, at least for my sign up flow stuff. So uh, I've got this set up for when this is clicked, but I want to also note that uh, typically you want to maybe have some additional stuff happening when someone's signing up for the first time and then when they've already signed up and they're just logging in, then we will um, have them do less. So what I'm going to do here is that when the mode is sign up, and this is a this is a mode that is changed. What I'm doing is I'm I'm utilizing there's so let's see if we show this off here. There's this sign up login, and this sign out is here just for testing. But uh, we can see that it the mode changes based on state, and that's what I'm using here. And that's pretty default for all of the bubble stuff for anyone that's you know already created a the old-fashioned username and password login. Okay, so let me go and paste the expression. So when it's a sign up, I want this whole thing. And then when it is login, these are my two, yep. Then I'm going to trim this down. And I will actually still allow first name, last name, full name to be added. And uh, just in case somebody changes their name over time, so we'll get that. But then, you know, we'll just take away any of the other, any of the other stuff, and we'll allow the new user to navigate on. Cool. So now we're on to part three of our bubble setup, and all it is that's left for us to do is some testing. So I'm going to go to my database, and I'm actually going to delete out this user because uh, I just want to show off, you know, everything from scratch, and I'm just going to. Play around with this. I want to. I want to have a user that signed out, and since I deleted that user, I don't know if the sign out if that'll mess with anything or not. But since I was just using that user, now I have signed out. So I am not signed in, and I'm going to go here to sign up, where I will click this and walk through this. Sign up flow where we'll see the user added to the database. All right, so it's walked me through, it's got me in my terms and conditions, and let's go ahead and just take a look so we can see that this user was successfully added to the database. Now, one thing I wanna show off here is I'm also going to just return to that page and then on the page, so what I want to show off is that I'm going to go ahead and just sign this user out. 
and the user does exist in our database. So I'm going to show now just the regular login so we can see that this works both for sign in and, and uh, sign up and login. And what it should do is it should send us back to that terms and conditions because, yep, because we never uh, accepted it. So if we agree, then we can move on into the app. But that's the end of this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like or subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more tips about building in Bubble.